good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Isaiah 53 verses 3 to 5. <clears throat> Isaiah 53 verses 3 to 5. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain, like one from whom people hide their faces. He was despised and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by Him, and afflicted. But He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on Him, and by His wounds we are healed. Praise God for this word. This verses was written by the prophet Isaiah, and speaking about the coming Messiah, that Messiah is our Lord Jesus Christ. Why would an omnipotent God, a, an all-knowing, all-powerful God, and an omnipresent God, He's present everywhere at every moment, and an omniscient God, all-knowing all God, would send his only son to his created world to die and to suffer and be humiliated in front of his creation. We know that God is all-sufficient. He does not need anything. And what caused him to send his son? The Bible said in John 3.16, For God so loved the world, that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And also in John 15, verse 13, it said, Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. God is holy. He cannot accept sins. And the word, God say, and the word of God says, Without the shedding of the blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Jesus paid the penalty of our sins. The Bible speaks about faith, it speaks about hope, and it speaks about love. And the Bible also said, but the greatest of this is love. Let us honor him today. Let us 
remember his death on the cross. If I can ask the, for the volunteers to distribute the element for us. And while we are waiting for the emblems, for the emblems, the Bible said everyone ought to examine themselves before the eat of the bread and drink from the cup. Let us be in the attitude of prayer, asking God to show us where we are before Him right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Luke chapter 22, verses 19 to 20. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us all partake of the bread. Thank you, Jesus. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us all drink of the, of the wine. Thank you, Lord. We praise you. <clears throat> Let us all give thanks to the Lord. Lord, we thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Lord, we remember you, what you have done the cross of Calvary. We bless you, O oh God. We give you all the praises. You deserve the praises and the adoration of your people. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen and amen. Let us all be seated. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> I'm doing a series at the moment, and uh, the series is based on the reality we're saved by grace, but what is God's expectation of us? Should we have anything to do? Okay? So what? Jesus said, I have gone to prepare a place for you. And so he has prepared a place for us. But, um, and we're saved by grace. The Bible says that uh, in uh, Ephesians chapter 2 and uh, verses 8 and 9 says, um, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of yourselves, it is a gift from God. Not by works so that anyone can boast. Okay, so it's not by works, but is there an expectation of us? I want to suggest there are quite a few expectations. I spoke last week about love. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples for the love that you have for one another. And who remembers I gave a bit of homework last week? I don't normally give homework. But uh, I said that uh, this week... <coughs> Do something as an act of love for somebody with no expectation of anything in return. Unconditional love. We are loved by God unconditionally. Not because we're good, but because he loves us. Okay? He loves us just the way we are. But I want to talk today about transformation. I believe that God doesn't want you to stay the way you are. Okay? He saves us by grace. And many of us have come from a, a background where it wasn't so good. And he still loves us. And we can receive him by grace. And we can have the assurance of eternal life. But he does want to do some transformation. Okay, I, the word transformation is a marked change in form, nature or appearance. You know, we have transformers trans and they change into something different. God doesn't want us to change from being a human being, but he does change us so that we can be more like him. In, in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, the, Bibles were, the disciples were, were encouraged to wait 
until the Holy Spirit came upon them so that then they could be his witnesses. Okay, God wants us to be a witness to others around the place by the way we speak, by the way we act, by the way we love. Okay, that is, so God wants us to do that, but he doesn't want us to do it in our own strength. He wants us to do it in the power of the Holy Spirit. As the Holy Spirit comes upon us, uh, he will enable us to be the people that he wants us to be. But hopefully that uh, we're not the same person after many years of being a Christian, that we are more like Christ. Okay? We need to change the way we think. We need to change the, what we do and particularly how we, ch- how we respond to people. Okay? In Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 26, the Bible says, I will give you a new heart and I will put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Okay, God wants us to be soft-hearted, not hard-hearted. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and prove what God's will is. His good, pleasing and perfect will. Okay, God wants us to think like him. Think like God. Look at people the way God would look at people. Respond to people the way he would want to re- you to respond. We have the greatest model uh, and example in Jesus Christ. Full of compassion, full of grace, full of mercy, full of love. Hallelujah. We should aspire to be like Jesus. We'll never be Jesus, never be completely like Jesus, but we can be more Christ-like in our character than we were when we were first saved. Transformed. God is looking, he's not looking for people who've got it all together. He's not looking for perfect or even capable people. He's looking for people who are available for him. Available for God. In, uh, in, in 1, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old has gone and the new is here. Okay, it's, it's, it's a starting point from where we, where we are to where God wants us to be. Transforming. I, I was, as I was praying about it, and I was go for, went for my walk, and I, I've been walking past the gym regularly, and uh, in a gymnasium, when somebody goes to the gym, if they're fat and flabby and weak, or if they're skinny and scrawny, they have an expectation when they spend time in the gym that they will become trim, taut, and terrific. Okay? <laughs> that they will be vibrant, muscly. Okay? That's the, that's the ambition. See, they become transformed from what they were to what they want to be. Okay, but there are conditions to being transformed. If you want to change, there are conditions that you have to have. Okay? You, you can know all about being fit and how to live healthy, how to eat properly, everything. You could have all that, but unless you do it, you'll remain the same. You can look at a picture of how you want to be, but you will remain as you are unless you do something about it. So there's an expectation to act, to do something. Okay? So God wants us to be transformed into his likeness, to be more like him. Okay? I'm not talking about physically. I'm talking about in our character, the way we are. And as a matter of fact, so after we've been a Christian for some time, we ought to have some character traits that Jesus has. In Galatians, it talks about the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, how you handle situations, self-control. Okay, that should be our characteristics. 
because we're in Christ and the Holy Spirit equips us. Okay, but we have to do something about it. It just won't happen. Okay, sometimes we think, well, because fruit grows, it'll just happen. All I've got to come to church on Sunday and then, you know, wow, I'll be a new person. Oh, yeah. Well, you won't be a new person. You'll be the same person you are unless you have your mind renewed. Okay, we've got to change your carnal mind into a spiritually godly mind. We've got to use, we've got to be more like Christ, okay? I said it before that when I first became a Christian, I realised how much I didn't think like God. I would do things much different than God would do it. But I realised that his way is right and my way was wrong, okay? So I have to have my, have to have my mind renewed. Start thinking and looking about how would Jesus handle this? Okay, how would he do it? I was uh, thinking about still on the fitness trip, all right? We'll still talk about the fitness trip. You know, we can be uh, out of shape, but we have a goal and a vision to run a marathon. Who's got a vision to run a marathon? Nobody. One person wants to run a marathon, okay? Okay, how many people have run a marathon? Wow, we've had some people have run marathons. Hallelujah. Well, can you run a marathon today? No. Okay, if you have a vision and a goal to run a marathon and, and you say, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to psych myself up, I'm going to run a marathon, okay? I, I get the book out, I know how to run the marathon, I know the course, I know everything about it, and, I'm just, and I've, I've studied up on how you should get fit, and I've studied up what you should eat, but if you, if you take off now to run a marathon, you know what will happen? You'll die. <laughs> okay, by the time you get about 10 k's, 20 k's, you are history. You'll be puffed out and they say, go on, keep going, that marathon, got to keep going. <laughs> well, if you keep going, man, you are dead. Is that right? Yes. Okay, well, that's what, you know why? Because you didn't follow the rules. You've got to Know about it, you've got to psych it up, and then you've got to do it. You've got to train, you've got to practice. Okay? You might start with 100 metres. That's okay. 200 metres, 2 k's, 6 k's. You know, a normal, t- a normal suggested program for running a marathon takes six weeks if you're already fit. If you're already fit, no, not six weeks, 16 weeks, sorry, 16 weeks. But think, it's based on the fact that you can already do a few things. And therefore you run a little bit, and you run a little bit further, and you run a little bit further, and a bit further, until you're up to peak condition, and then you can run the marathon. Hallelujah? Okay. Well, I want to suggest that our Christian life is a marathon. I want to suggest it's not a sprint, it's not a 100-metre sprint, it's a marathon. And therefore... W- it's, so it's not a one-soft thing either. It's a, it's a lifestyle. It's a continuous working towards what you want to obtain. Okay? And so that only happens from acting, from practice. If you want to be a doctor, you've got to, you, you've got to study, right? You've got to study to be a doctor and you have to practice. You don't want to go to a doctor that he's going to start working on you if he has only studied it. He knows all the things he should do, but never done it. That's not a good place to go. Okay? I wouldn't advise that. Okay? So therefore, it's important to know, when you go to a doctor, that they have done it before. Okay? They've got some sort of a track record. Okay? Not, especially when you walk into a doctor's office and you see they look about 15. You think, man, I'm not too sure about this. You know what I mean? They may have done all the study, but they've done nothing. You know, they've done nothing. And if they want to operate on you, I want to suggest you want to see some references of people he's been to before. Okay? You know, hey. All right? So therefore, there needs to be transformation. There needs to be change in our life. We've got to, we, we've got to respond We've got to start having some of the characteristics of Christ. Hallelujah. Some of the main problems that we had before, they should leave. 
if we've got a bad problem with self-control, it should change. But it only happens if we do the stuff. Do the stuff. Practice. Okay, read the manual. Here's the manual. Okay, here's the manual. But it's not enough to just read the textbook. Okay? Even reading the manual is not enough. You've got to practice. Okay, and, and God has his way of bringing people into our life that enable us to practice. Okay? Somebody will give you a hard time. Somebody might even abuse you. But uh, we need to love our neighbour as ourself. Okay? So that love somebody as you would love them takes practice. And you might slip up a few times, but it takes practice. So one of the expectations is from God is that you will not stay the same way as you were the, were the day you accepted Christ. After 20 years' time, you should not be the same person anymore. You should have some of your character flaws dealt with. Some of the things that you've struggled with before, even if you haven't totally got them together, you should be able to handle some things. You know, so there's... I believe that's an expectation that God has got. Okay? An expectation. He expects us to be able to love others. If you have a trouble with loving people, you need to pray and ask God, teach me. He will bring some people across your path that you're not easily loved to give you practice on how to love somebody. Okay? If you have some flaws in your character, and we've all got them, it's just some of us have got a few more than others, and some of our, some of our flaws are more deeply rooted in our life than others. And so God wants us to be changed, to be transformed. Okay? Changed. So the, so, so the flaws in our armour are getting cleaned up. Fixed up. I was just thinking, when I just thought about it, I thought about a car. Yeah? Sometimes a car gets a dent in it, right? And it's got to go somewhere to get fixed up. I've got one in my car currently. The other night, I just got up, I went out to get some stuff, and I was so excited, I backed straight back into my brother's car. I only clipped it back a bit, but I hit it. I told Neville, and he's, he just wants me to get a quote. <laughs> but if I want to have that car fixed up, it's going to need, it needs some work down to it. Hallelujah. And hopefully in future, it needs a good, careful driver. What's God working on with you at the moment? You know, in uh, 2 Corinthians 3 and verse 17 and 18, it says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we who, uh, and we all, with unveiled faces, contemplate the Lord's glory, are being transformed into his image, with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. So God assists us with being transformed. He's talking about those with unveiled faces. He's talking about those who have come to the light of the understanding of the gospel, uh, that we're no longer under the law, and how it works, and that the penny drops. And if we are free and open to the Holy Spirit there will be a transformation that God starts to do in our life because we want to be obedient to him. Okay? See, one of the conditions of being transformed is obedience. Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey me. Okay? It just won't happen. Okay? It just won't happen. It happens because we're obedient to what God is saying to us. You know, God is speaking to us all the time. All the time he's speaking to us and he wants us to listen. He wants us to hear his voice. 
because he loves us and he cares for us and he wants to do a work in our life. And if, if we come to a, a point, you know, like in most businesses they have an inventory every so often, particularly at this time of the year. They start doing, I uh, have uh, to scratch with everything, with the finances. We should do an inventory of our life every so often. And say, well, am I having the same problems I was having last year again this year? Are all these things, or am I improving? That's like an inventory of our character, of the way we handle things. Now, the things that you were praying about your character last year, are you still praying about them? Has there been no change? If, if that happens, that means we should do a check. Am I reading the Word of God? Do I understand the issues? Do I spend time with God? Am I open to the moving of the Holy Spirit? And start to adjust. And the main thing is, am I intentional about dealing with issues? Do I care? And we should answer those questions, honestly. But the key is, if we're intentional, we will do something about it. If we don't care, it'll be a little bit like James. James, the, it was written by Jesus' brother, half-brother, the book of James. And he says about the word of God, talking about the word of God, he says, it's like, I'll read it. Probably better if I read it. I won't mess it up as much if I read it. And he says, anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at their face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away immediately and forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed with what they do. They will be transformed. They will change. So the flaws that we had today, we won't have tomorrow. Or they'll be less. Okay? Transformation is an expectation of God for us. Jesus said in, on the Sermon on the Mount, he said, a wise person is like somebody who builds their house on a solid foundation. And when the storms of life come, they'll be able to stand. That is if they listen to the word and they obey it. Okay? But a foolish person is someone who hears the exact same message and doesn't do anything about it. Jesus said it's like a foolish person who builds their house on the sand and the same storms of life come and the house crumbles because it's not built upon the rock. And the rock is Jesus Christ and his word. So we have the blessing of the word of God to assist us to be the people that God wants us to be. Hallelujah. I just want to pray. Father, I thank you for your goodness. I thank you, Lord, for your word. I thank you for the opportunity we have, Lord God, as people, Lord, to read your word. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord God, that lives within us. Lord, to guide and direct us. Lord, your Holy Spirit, who is, who is the advocate, who is our comforter. Lord, the Holy Spirit, Lord God, who is our senior advisor to guide our life. Lord, through the storms of life and the dealings that you place in our hearts, Lord, so that we can be transformed to be more like Jesus. Lord, to, to have some of the characteristic, the character traits that Jesus has.
Father, I ask your blessing be upon every single person. I pray, Father, that you would guide and direct our life. Lord, that we would be obedient when you speak to us. Lord, that we wouldn't ignore you. But Lord, we would acknowledge you. Father, I thank you for your goodness, for your love and for your mercy. And Father, I pray a blessing upon everybody that's here this morning. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I cut it a bit short this morning, so I didn't have to hang on too long. You can still go out and have a cup of it, but it's still only 15 minutes before we have our annual general meeting. Okay? Bless you all. If you have something you want to have prayer for, feel free to come out and we'll still pray with you. Bless you all. Cheers.